Beyond the slide, Chinese transportation was waiting. From here, the road lay open to base camp at Everest, over 300 kilometers away. In no time, the jungle gives way to scrub, to subalpine shrubs, to tundra-like grasses on the Tibetan plateau. The plateau is an enormous bench land along the northern flanks of the Himalayas. Most of it is above 14,000 feet. The climate is desert, much like the Arctic, with a brief two-month growing season. Eking out an existence here is no easy thing. Life expectancy is about 40. Many Tibetans live as nomads, others practice subsistence agriculture. A pause en route for the expedition is a bit like stepping into a friendly stone hill. These people had never heard a tape recording in their lives. Shigar, last town before Everest. Here, as everywhere in Tibet, the Buddhist spirituality of the people is evident. The Chinese annexed Tibet in 1950 and imposed communist rule on a land where one quarter of all men were monks. Thousands of Tibetans were killed. Over 6,000 monasteries were destroyed. In 1960, the Chinese mounted an Everest attempt of their own. First step, forced Tibetans to build this road from Shigar, over 100 kilometers to the mountain. In 1980, they opened it to Westerners. The expedition reaches the Pang La Pass in the foothills, over 16,000 feet. All right, guys. A little lightheadedness seems in order. For the first time, they glimpse Everest. But now the effects of altitude are being felt. Headaches, difficulty breathing, increasing heart rate, loss of energy. A slow process of physical and mental deterioration has begun, which, given time, will end in death. From this point on, the expedition becomes a race against time. One surprising monk and a bender two later, and there she is, Everest. At her feet, the Rongbuk Monastery, highest inhabited place on earth built to worship the mountain nearly 2,000 years ago. The monks invite the expedition in for tea. They serve a concoction laced with salt and yak butter. Oh. 
It is roughly five kilometers from Rongbuk to base camp. People prepared to risk their lives on Everest would rather walk than ride at certain points along the way. For years, the focus of their efforts has been this bleak expanse of gravel. Base camp at Everest. The mountain extends a cool welcome as they struggle against altitude, reached too quickly, and cutting wind. They are now 17,000 feet above sea level. The snow should be letting up by now. They try the phone for the first time. Got an answering machine. <laughs> oh, it's got an answering machine. Yeah. Ain't technology marvelous. They try another number. Eric Hobson, this is your brother Alan Hobson at Base Camp Mount Everest. Not that you can think of it for That box of equipment they packed from Canada to Asia, from Nepal to Tibet, <laughs> and all the way to Base Camp at Everest, surely one of the world's most remote locations, lets them dial home direct. Cheers. It's nothing short of miraculous. <laughs> the days of waiting at base camp, of watching the mountain and her changing moods, are time well spent acclimatizing to altitude. Their lives depend on how well they adjust. The team doctors conduct a seminar. So in other words, your weak point are your lungs, cerebral edema, you get uh, <coughs> swelling of the brain. Even as they listen, cells are swelling in their brains and lungs. Pressure is growing in retinal capillaries. Death can occur six hours after symptoms appear. Here. Uh, there are windows for uh, the poor person inside to uh, look out and hopefully not experience too much claustrophobia. The gamma bag is a quick fix for emergencies, like being inside a pumped up air mattress, good for a simulated drop of a few thousand feet. The question why, why do they try, remains unanswered as ever. Except at this time, there is a reason we can comprehend. Another mystery to solve. Half a world away, a young girl and thousands like her. Time for wives and friends to head down. Less time spent up here, the better. A hard parting for some. A fear of last farewells. Hardest parting of all, perhaps, for the father of a young girl in Toronto. We're reality of your dream, it just feels really good. I feel the peace, fantastic, in front of the mountain, and all we have to do is strip up to the top. <laughs> I wish you all the best. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie. You can trip back. Bye. Okay. He was ordered down by the doctor. It shouldn't be snowing like this. The monsoons should be ending. In the eyes of Tibetans, Everest is a goddess to be appeased before violating her sanctity. The Sherpas asked the monk to come and pray for the climbers, a gift of profound faith and fear. They raise prayer flags to appease the mountain. On a rise above base camp, team members find good reason to respect the mountain. 
Previous teams erected the markers in memory of members they left behind. Most recent, an Austrian who died this year above the North Call, on the route the Canadians will take. They had asked the Chinese for 45 yaks. The herders arrived with 30, which promptly took over the campsite. With the arrival of too few yaks, the team has to revamp freight plans for the trek to advanced base camp. Several tons of gear and supplies are batched and loaded. How these animals pack such loads over rough, rising country at altitudes with less than half the oxygen at sea level is astonishing. The expedition moves into moonscapes of moraine through rills and eskers of gravel spawned by Everest. Their route lies up the East Rongbuk Glacier for some 15 kilometers. The trek will take two days. On the second day, under a closer looming Everest, they reach the foot of the North Call Icefall and the site of the advanced base camp. The work of setting up advanced base camp looks easier than it feels. It lies at over 21,000 feet, about the same altitude flown by intercity commuter jets. One consolation for the cook, bread rises phenomenally under low atmospheric pressure. But it takes a half an hour to boil an egg. It sits somewhere on that slab These people are proven mountaineers. Their footprints are on many of the world's highest peaks. Yet still, they must wait to acclimatize. Let their systems catch up with altitude. The Sherpas are better off in this respect. Their genetics evolved where they live at 13,000 feet. Few Everest expeditions would succeed without their support. The team meets to review strategy for the assault. These are the slopes, the slopes to the North Call from ABC that I'm really concerned about because of the avalanche potential. It's killed more people or as many as any other route on the mountain. One of the problems is to try and come up with a few decent days to be able to take loads, dump them on here. We're looking at moving about 75 or 80 loads. The campsite here, we're looking at putting in two tents so that we can put four people on the, on the face or on the ridge here. And then from there, this is where we would start to use oxygen in uh, from 25,000 feet to actually carry from here to the Camp 6 at 8,300 meters. And we're looking at moving about 10 loads in there. 12 bottles of oxygen, which will give us, for four people who are putting in two tents again, will give us an opportunity of putting four people in there for three days. So that's it. We're looking at a one-shot summit attempt. Uh, the route from here then goes straight up the North Ridge to join the Northeast Ridge and then is a 12 to 15 hour day up and over the first step and uh, past that up and around the second